Before we get started, you might be thinking, what is the point in this sort of comparison? Because the Note 10 is a newer, more expensive device, so of course it's going to have better cameras. Not to mention OnePlus aren't particularly known for having really great cameras in their devices. However, as always, it's not quite as simple as that. I think OnePlus have been doing some great stuff with their cameras recently, and their camera software has been really, really nicely updated. So I think it's time we took a closer look. Each phone does have a triple camera array, so I think it's only fair if we test all three of those, and we might as well get started with the main standard shooter on each. One of the first things you're going to notice in this comparison is the Note 10 is way more saturated than the OnePlus. This photo shows it off pretty obviously. Looking at the colour of the sea and the sky, it's got a huge blue punch that just isn't there with the OnePlus, almost to the point where it looks a little sickly in my opinion. Between the two, I like how the OnePlus has kept the rocks looking sharper, but the Note 10 keeps the distance more detailed, which arguably is the focus of this image. I do like them both though. Both cameras have done a good job at capturing the light coming through the bottles here. The Note 10 comes closer to how I remember the scene looking, and I prefer the exposure on the labels, but again the differences aren't too much and that can only be a good thing. The OnePlus actually has better subject isolation here, with the window being slightly out of focus, which is great to see. Starting to see some more differences between the two cameras here. Again the Note 10 has that Samsung saturation turned right up to 11, but it's also got better exposure on the street and the sky. If you look at the OnePlus, the clouds are a little closer to overexposure and the street is a little darker too, as are the plants. There's a good example here of the Note 10 nailing the exposure and dynamic range in this one. The sky and water are much easier on the eyes than the OnePlus, which has wandered into areas of near overexposure. Finally enough though, it's actually a good example of the mad saturation levels on the Note 10 working in its favour for once, producing a nicer colour on the blues in this shot. In fairness, this is a really difficult photo to expose correctly, and they've both done a good job, but I think the Note takes this one again. Better dynamic range doesn't always work for an image though, and that feels a little case in point here. The Note 10 has straight up murdered this image trying to raise the shadows up, and the whole thing just looks pretty horrid, while the deeper shadows on the OnePlus have made for a much nicer, more balanced image overall, so it definitely takes it for this one. I also prefer the OnePlus's photo here over the Note 10 too. Despite the trees in the distance being lost compared to the Note, the colour balance of the image is much nicer. This is a good example of the saturation levels on the Samsung going just too far, the sand and the sky look really artificial, and the temperature feels so hot as well. The OnePlus definitely takes this one for me. I do much prefer what the Note 10 is doing in this shot though. It pushes the colours nicely here so they really pop, and it's managed to keep the rope at the bottom of the image exposed well, really showing off that green colour. The OnePlus has also done a good job, the colours are slightly more muted in general, but the big difference here is you can barely see the green on the bottom of the rope and the boat. Out of the two, I prefer the OnePlus's exposure here, the colour is also much closer to how it looked too. However, taking a closer look at the rope, the Note 10 has captured more information on the rope itself. It's unlikely you'd ever want to zoom in that far though, so I think the OnePlus takes this one for me. Initially, the differences here are again really hard to spot, but if push came to shove, I do prefer the colour from the OnePlus here. Light on the stones and the door have a more natural hue, and the image feels more defined for it. Punching in, I would say the note keeps more detail in the stones, but the text really is neck and neck. I think this image pretty much comes down to personal preference. Let's move on to the telephoto lens now, and I must admit, this is where the Note 10 really starts to pull ahead of the OnePlus 7 Pro. Despite the OnePlus having a longer zoom at three times compared to the Note 10's two times, the camera is pretty much worse in most scenarios. Let's start with this building. As you can see, the OnePlus does zoom in further off the bat, but once you zoom in digitally on the Note 10 to match the same zoom level, it has a much sharper image, keeping a lot more detail. The OnePlus has a muddy and soft look here, and it doesn't look that great to be honest. I will say though, the blue sky on the Note's image just outright wasn't there, so the realism certainly goes to OnePlus here. It's a similar story here. The OnePlus has the upper hand on the initial zoom levels, 
but once you digitally zoom with the note, the image is just outright better. It's sharper, there's more detail, and the colours are much more appealing in my opinion. The green on the OnePlus image is actually looking pretty sickly here. So this time around, I actually zoomed in three times in camera on the Note 10 to see how it compares. And I think this is the most obvious example of the Note's tele lens just being better in general. From a dynamic range perspective, it's kept the highlights in check nicely and even managed to pull some color out of the sky. The OnePlus has blown out the sky slightly and the image as a whole feels flat compared to the Note 10. I think overall, it's an all out win for the Note 10's tele lens here. And finally, let's take a look at the new favorite child of the mobile camera world, the ultra wide angle. So in my eyes, it's pretty obvious that OnePlus put most of their effort into the main lens. And for a device that costs a lot less, I think it's fair and also the right move. But as you'll see from these images, the Note 10 ultra wide wipes the floor of what OnePlus are doing. It's wider for one, which is great. It's also sharper across the board and the colors are much nicer. It's better to the point of me not really needing to talk over these images because it's so obvious. It's doing a much better job pretty much every single time. It's a lot more consistent with the other cameras built into the Note 10 and feels like it's from the same camera with a different lens, which is how it really should be. I'm still grateful that the OnePlus 7 Pro has a wide angle and by no means do I think it's bad. It's just the Note 10's is objectively much better. We're not done quite yet though. No camera is worth its salt nowadays without a decent night mode. So let's take a look at that before we round up the video. Initially, I thought this might be another easy win for the Note 10, especially with this first image, which I basically took in pitch black. The white balance from the Note is much better here and zooming in, there's a lot less noise. Overall, it's produced a nicer image than the OnePlus. However, take away that more controlled condition and it's the OnePlus that pulls ahead. The image produced here feels a lot clearer and more true to life, while the Note's image has pulled a lot of green hues out, which are a little unsightly. The OnePlus image is also sharper, zooming into the plants on the right here, they're a lot more clear than what the Note 10 has made. On the surface, it's a little difficult to tell how much of a difference there is here. Both cameras have flared a lot off the streetlight but they both achieved a pretty good result. However, once you zoom in, you can see the OnePlus has kept so much more detail on the sign with totally readable text. Now there is a chance I had shaky hands while taking the shot on my note, but I took a few photos of the same scene and this was genuinely the best one from the note. So once again, I think the OnePlus pulls ahead here. This last photo really is just an example that while night mode is pretty stunning when it wants to be, it's by no means perfect yet. Both of these images are full of noise and the OnePlus has made a real mess of the color balance. I would say the Note 10 takes this one, but that's nothing really to write home about. As a much more expensive and newer device, you would expect the Note 10 to come out on top. And if you factor in all three cameras, I really think it is. The wide angle and the telephoto are a clear cut above the OnePlus and it's a little better in those dynamic range situations as well. The 7 Pro did prove its worth in some scenarios though and some of the shots I just outright preferred. Not to mention the night shots in general were quite a lot better I think. I mentioned in my Note 10 review that Samsung have got quite a lot of work to catch up with the night modes on other phones and I think that just really compounds the issue here. But I'm sure with some sort of software update they could probably get that going pretty well. The standard camera on both phones though is pretty comparable and I think for the price difference that's really really good on OnePlus to match up with the Note 10 so there's really nothing to complain about there. I think either way you'd be really hard pushed to be disappointed with both. In fact I don't think you'd be disappointed with any phone camera from the last few years. They're all getting so good now that comparing them on these sorts of basis just feels a little redundant but maybe those thoughts should be pushed into another video. Anyway, that rounds up this video. Let me know which cameras you preferred in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, pop a like. If you loved it, pop a sub. And hit the bell too, that would be fantastic. And I will see you all in the next one.